This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. Okay, day five with Jack, and while I was just walking him out here, he actually just tried biting at me. You can see a little wet spot on my sleeve, because he had been drinking in his defense. He'd been drinking before we came in. But we were walking along, and I can show you how we were just walking, and he actually, he was about this far back, and he actually jumped towards me and grabbed at me. And the reason he's doing that is because he's a lot more comfortable with me. So he's a lot more comfortable than he was if you go back and watch day one, day two, and he is a stallion. Stallions are, they're all horses are hardwired to want to know who's in charge. But being a stallion, he's extra, extra aware of it because the hormones are telling him, especially as we come into spring and he's a two-year-old stallion, the hormones are telling him, I really should know who's in charge here. I should be the one in charge. So he, he lunged forward, and like I said, his chin's all wet because he was actually drinking. So, so he, that's how you can see the wet mark on me, but he actually jumped towards me. And we'll just see. Again, it's the same, it's the same questions that he's been asking me, even when he's 20 feet away from me and he's swirling his head. And that's why he's so far back, and that's why this is that arm I've shown you before that I'll throw up to block with. That's why you end up with that kind of a mark there or whatever, because I blocked him like that. And so, so we'll just keep watching. He's really nice. I've had stallions that stayed stallions their whole lives that were looked just like this at this stage. So just because he did that doesn't mean he's automatically going to be a gelding, but it does get, there's one check mark against him, you know, and we'll just, we'll just keep playing it by ear at the same time. Look at him here. So. Here we go. The other thing that that does when he's, when he's showing me he's that comfortable with me, which is the opposite of him being scared of me, it means that I can turn up the pressure. I talked a little bit about that the other day, that I know when I can turn up the pressure because he'll give me signs like he's bored, he's pawing, and he's looking bored as opposed to looking nervous. The more comfortable he gets with me, and especially if he gets aggressive like he just did, it's the okay for me to go ahead and work him even harder because he's asking for it. He's like a teenager sitting there pounding his fist at you on the, on the countertop asking you where dinner is and being demanding, and you say, okay, look, buddy, let me show you about life. He comes out here, and this is pretty nice. I mean, nice, forward soft Ooh. there when I was walking up to him he's backing away from me a little bit I'm gonna leave him a little bit on that side instead of me backing up and drawing him back into me I'm gonna leave him a little bit backed away from me because he did try to bite at me this morning so I'm gonna go ahead and leave him reward him for backing away a little bit so I'll, I'll make sure that he's out of my space even more when I'm out here working I can make sure he's out of my space there's other times that when I'm when you're putting the halter on in the stall it's difficult to not be inside of each other's bubbles. Walking down the aisleway, it's difficult not to be closer than I am when I'm out here. So there's different places that you're more at risk. So you can see on this rope halter, up here on the side of his head, I've actually put a quick halter hook in there because I love the rope halter because of it being more narrow, gives me more control, but that quick halter hook makes it so I don't have to tie that knot every day. So, and when I go in to unhook it, I can just unhook it instead of having to tie and untie that knot, which doesn't seem like a huge deal. And it's not that I'm really obsessed with saving an extra 20 seconds, but what it does save me is that extra time that I'm sitting there, especially in the morning when he's fresh and he comes out of the stall, it saves me from having to stand there and mess with the knot while he's thinking about chewing on me 
or thinking about what, you know, he's, he's a pent up, you know, teenage boy who's ready to go. And, and he's, so it saves me that little extra time, keeps me a little safer. One thing to notice is my body language, not just uh, because I'm working with a young horse, but it's a common mistake when people are lunging, that when they're lunging, I'll see a lot of people backing away from their horse when they're walking around trying to lunge them. Uh, right now, I'm being overly animated because, again, I'm working with a young horse. It's like working with a younger child. So I'm being overly animated. When I step towards him and want to drive him, I raise my arms up. I almost look like I'm pushing him with my just my body language, and I'm walking towards him, almost like I'm driving him around in this circle. One common mistake that people make when they're first, they have a horse and they just start lunging it, and it can be a broke, trained horse, is they'll be doing similar to what I'm doing here, but they'll be backing away from the horse. They'll be ahead, and they'll be backing away, and that's like saying, I submit, I submit, I submit all the time, and those horses register that. Plus, the odds are that that horse will start turning and facing you. So if you have a horse that you have trouble lunging, watch that you get back here more towards the hip and you're driving them forward. A lot better this direction today, although still not quite as good as the other way. It's interesting to note that there when I kissed to get him to lope, he took my body language and everything and picked up the wrong lead because I was driving him forward. Where over here when I clucked and was just asking him to go forward, not specifically asking for the lope, he picked up the correct lead. Ooh. So I pulled him in, I said whoa, pulled him in, but then stomped and stopped him back there, stay out of my space. You'll notice I've been trying to stop him and turn him in on this side of the circle instead of over here, because over that way is the barn which is where he tends to pull towards anyway. He's saying, okay, I'll stay out of your space. Join us next time for another episode of Jack.